We made it. I'm so excited. I don't know why I love this, this text so much. Um, but if you weren't with us a couple days ago, and hello to all you guys who are hopping on, um, 2016, I believe, I was, no, 2018, I was asked, you know, anywhere in Israel, anywhere in all the Holy Land, where do you want to teach? I was like, I want Caesarea. I didn't ask for the garden tomb. I didn't ask for Calvary. I didn't ask for the Galilee down by the water. I didn't ask for the Temple Mount, the Southern Steps, all these amazing places. And I said, no, I, I want Caesarea because there's a message there. And I want to share with the people who are with me. I want to share. And so Paul, he's given his testimony. He declared his obedience. He's standing in the auditorium there down by the sea. There's this big, you know, theater. And, and the king, Agrippa, he's, he's on the, this, this platform. And Paul's down below. He's got chains around his wrists. And he's preaching to the king and, and, to, and to Festus and, and to the crowd that's gathered around. And this is what Paul says. He says in verse 24, now he thus made his defense. And Festus, so I guess it's the reply first. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning has driven you mad. But he, Paul said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king, before whom I also speak freely, knows these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escapes his attention, since the, this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God. It's like, I pray to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today, might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except these chains. And when he had said these things, the king stood up as well as the governors and Bernice and those who sat with him. And when they had gone aside, they talked amongst themselves saying, this man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. And Agrippa said to Festus, this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So what we see today it's Paul finishing up this amazing and beautiful testimony. And, and he, he's, he looks mad to everyone because he's so different. Something's taken hold of this man. Something has changed him. Something has made him different. Anyone who knew him from before, anyone who was a normal person, looked at him and said, something's different. Something is just weird and wrong and off about this guy. He's not talking like normal people talk. He's not living like normal people live. He, he's not behaving how sane people behave. Much learning has driven you mad, Paul. And then Paul says, no, no, I'm not mad. And, and he looks at Agrippa and he's like, you know, I know you know. And I don't know how many of us have people in our lives that that's, that's our message, right? Like, I know you know this. I know you know the truth. I know that you know what you need to do. And Agrippa says, you almost persuade me. Many people are almost persuaded to become Christians. Many have been persuaded to go to church. Many have been persuaded to, to make some change in their life. But Paul was telling Agrippa, I, I want you to go all in like me. I want you to look crazy like I look crazy. And Paul says it, and this was the, this was the verse that, that drew me and made me just so desperately desire to share these words right there, standing where Paul stood. He said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become almost and altogether such as I am, except these chains. And that is my prayer. Paul was in chains. 
not everyone's going to end up in chains. You know, I'm a pastor, and not everyone's going to become a pastor. But that doesn't matter. My calling is like such a minuscule thing in comparison to how I am, to what God has done, to, to the experience of his presence, just to know that God is near. And so he prays and he says it. I wish, I pray that all you today who are here hearing what I have to say would become almost and even altogether as I am transformed by God to not just have a church experience and a tradition and a thing that we do, but to literally have a life-changing transformation take place where everything else becomes a side issue in life. Everything else becomes peripheral and it's God and his glory and his presence and his work and his son and his word. Those become everything and everything else fades away. Paul didn't care about his chains. Paul didn't care that he had been in prison. You see, all these things that seem to weigh us down and plague us, they they just seem to go away because of the presence of him in our lives. Any woman who's given birth to a child knows the extreme, the pain and the agony and the travail, and yet, The moment they lay that baby on your chest, somehow all of that stuff disappears. It just vanishes because of the joy that is set before you. And that's the idea, is that when the joy and the peace and the power of Jesus Christ is truly presented before you and you experience him and you experience his power, all the other stuff goes away. And this is Paul, and it's me, just praying to God. I pray, I would to God that all of you, Agrippa, you guys, everyone, that you would be almost, and no, not just almost, even all together, just as I am, experiencing what I've experienced. And man, it's just an amazing thing. And the world watches. And I'm gonna tell you what, one of the greatest testimonies, if not by far and large, the absolute greatest testimony to a lost world is witnessing a transformed life, seeing people on fire and zealous for Jesus. And I will also say that probably the greatest hindrance to the gospel today is not false prophets, it's not cults and false religions, It's not the temptations of sin in this world. It is when an unbelieving world looks at the hypocrisy in the church and they see people called Christians who are not transformed, who are not different, who live, act, and speak just like they do. And they wonder, why would I ever be drawn to that? They believe in in rules and things, and yet what do they gain? They're just like me. You see, you allowing God to transform you is one of the biggest deals in this world. You allowing God to empower you, to radically transform the way you think, behave, act, move, and breathe, that has an impact on this world. And you will reach many people, dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of people that I will never talk to because you have your own sphere of influence, your own friends, your own family. And it's all of our jobs to to seek Jesus and to be filled with his Holy Spirit, to wait for the promise of the Father and to be empowered to be witnesses unto him. That's what we're called to do. And so we need to allow that to happen. And we need to remember the seriousness of what our sin and our untransformed state, what that has on other people. You see, Paul was thought of to be mad. Why? Because he was walking in the spirit and living a spirit-filled life. And that wasn't something everyone was familiar with seeing. 
Yet what happens when a whole group of Christians, a church, begins to walk in obedience and be filled with the Holy Spirit and to have that flowing through everything that they do? It transforms families, it transforms cities, it transforms nations, it's revival. Revival isn't unbelievers coming to know Jesus. Revival is when Christians, followers of Jesus, are filled with his presence and it outflows from them. Lance Hobner said, revival is falling in love with Jesus all over again. Like David prays in Psalm 51, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, right? Just set the fire back on again, God, and let me burn with zeal for you. I would to God that you, all of you who hear this day, would become almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. God's called me to specific things that you don't need, that you have no, it doesn't matter, but he'll call you to specific things. You'll have your own chains, your own calling, your own things that he locks you into. So, church, are you willing to let God transform and, and do a miracle in your life? Seek him and you will find. Ask and you'll receive. Knock and it'll be opened unto you. If we, all of us parents, know how to give good gifts to our children, being evil, really, how much more will your perfect and amazing and heavenly Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? All right, guys, go and apply this to your day and to your life. And I will see you guys all tomorrow morning.